in this video i'm going to describe as much as i know about the circuit of raspberry pi 0w so let's start with the power in connector j1 connector right here it, the raspberry pi 0w gets powered in with a 5 volt and what it looks like raspberry pi actually does supply a schematics and according to this schematic we have a 47 microfarad capacitor here but there's no it looks like there's no fuse or any other additional component for example reverse polarity protection or any fancy things here just a simple 5 volt and a 47 microfarad capacitor so the next important thing in the power supply line is this IC. If you look at more closely, it says something like 2306KE. And this is very interesting. If you have any interest in other designs, you may want to look at this chip very closely. PAM 2306A YPKE. This is a a dual regulator from Diodes Incorporation and the current rating is 1 ampere for each channel both of those two channels now the key thing is it comes in different configurations and depending upon the part number that you choose you can choose both of them 3.3 volt one 3.3 volt, one 2.5 volt, and one 3.3 volt, one point eight five eight volt, or you can choose the adjustable version. So that the version that uh, Raspberry Pi Zero is uh, is determined by the last four digits of the uh, last two digits rather of part number of this part number. The data sheet provides the part number details which is this one if you use k your output voltage v1 is 3.3 volt and if you use e in the m it you get 1.8 volt so now raspberry pi 0 uses 3.3 volt this 3.3 volt goes in addition to the other places the 40 pin connector right here on j8 now the 5 volt that's coming from this connector it goes directly over to this 40 pin connector and this 3.3 volt uh, goes also goes to this connector the rating of 3.3 volt is 1 ampere although the raspberry pi 0 itself will be using some of it so we will have less than 1 ampere available for our own circuit add on circuit or other things let's move on to uh, the next thing the processor what you see here is an alpida part b44322 and something like that and if you search for this part number you end up with a 4 gigabit ddr2 mobile ram which translates to 512 megabyte. Now, what is this part? It's a BGA part, 12 mm by 12 mm. But if you look at it, its structure, it looks something like this. All the BGA pins are at the edges of the square. So the Raspberry Pi Zero is actually the, the chip that we see right here is actually a package on package and what it means is something like this we have a processor at the bottom and the memory chip on the top of it the processor itself is a Broadcom processor we have some details here it is Broadcom BCM 232835 single core ARM 11 1.0 0 gigahertz processor now the, the details of the processor itself 
is under NDA from Broadcom. You could possibly contact Broadcom to get details of it. But we have some details of its spin out on this website. It's uh, on open source uh, or whatever. It's coming in open. It does give out the details of some of the pins, the GPIOs, and A to D converters, crystals, and this. So you can take a look at this. It for us, it's not very important because unless you are designing your own, you will go and contact Broadcom and design your own processor system. Uh, moving on to the other things, we have an HDMI connector here. And the part that you see here is used for EMI protection. And this one is, of course, the SD card connector. That leaves us with this chip. It's actually a chip for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. And the details of these are not publicly available, so I cannot tell. The one thing that I would like to tell is that there's a trace coming from this Wi-Fi Bluetooth module coming all the way here. And this is an onboard PCB antenna, and this is a very nice feature because without having an extended uh, extended part, it's able to create the antenna within the PCB itself. The connector here is for camera and Raspberry Pi schematic that's provided. It gives some details for the HDMI connector right here. Uh, three pairs of data and then a clock pins and I2C bus for HDMI communication. This G12 connector right here is for the camera connector. This is the status LED. And other than that, Raspberry Pi has provided very few details. These pins that uh, that it talks about is a part of the Broadcom chip BCM2835. You can see the pin numbers going to the 40 pin header. Uh, most of these pins are straightforward, like 3.3 3 volt, 5 volt, and the ground pins. You have a bunch of GPIO pins. But some of the pins, they can act as either the GPIO pin or some other peripheral bus. For example, GPIO 14 and 15 makes a serial port connection, a UART port. We have a, we have a I2C bus on GPIO 2 and 3. And then we have a SPI bus over there which can control uh, two sets of SPI bus using two chip enable. So that's pretty much what we need to know about the Raspberry Pi Zero W circuit. But there are a couple of things that I wanted to mention. And if you look at the bottom side, you have these two pins. These are actually pins for the testing the Raspberry Pi Zero. But it has been used uh, creatively in products like Hubfix to power the add-on boards using the POGO pins. And these two pins that you see here, right here, these are USB pins, USB 2.0. So the a product like Hubfix, it extends the USB to four port hub using these two pins from the power and these two pins from the USB. So the other test pins that you see, they are used for the testing the Raspberry Pi Zero in in-circuit tester or something like that. We have a CCID that can give some more details about it. Hopefully, these uh, details are helpful for you. Thanks for taking a look.